Hi, this is Francesco Rulli. I'm the CEO of Querlo. I'm also the Forbes Insights AI Solutions Business Partners. I'm here today with Reed Blackman, who covers uh, different roles. One is the CEO and founder of Virtual Consultants and also is a senior advisor uh, for EY and a former professor of philosophy. So Reed, if you can share with us a little bit more about your background and your work today. Yeah, sure. So my background is, as you said, I'm a, you know, by training, I'm a philosopher or an ethicist. So, you know, I was a professor for 10 years. Prior to that, of course, there was tons of grad school. Uh, so I've been teaching, researching, publishing on ethics for about 15 years. Um, I left academia a couple of years ago, maybe two and a half, three years ago, something along those lines. And I founded this company, Virtue, which is an ethics consultancy that focuses on digital risks. Um, you know, so think about the ethical risks associated with artificial intelligence or machine learning, um, uh, big data, blockchain, VR, AR, all those things. Um, and so most of my work um, is helping senior leaders to figure out how to systematically um, operationalize ethical risk mitigation, right? So you've got this company and you're building products or building ML products or data-driven products. How do we build them in a way that vets for ethical risks and capitalizes on ethical opportunities? That's sort, of the, that's sort of the core of my work. Very nice. Thank you, Reed. Now, uh, we are going through a very special time, uh, coronavirus, the pandemic, uh, the change of the, uh, uh, the future of work is today, basically. So what are your thoughts about the role of artificial intelligence in the, this new environment that we're living through? I mean, you know, look, at the end of the day, AI is a tool, right? So the, its relevance to COVID is to what extent can it be deployed in ways that will help us solve the problem, whether it's contact tracing or um, ferreting out who's got, who, who, has the, who has the virus um, or figuring out what vaccine or, or treatments might plausibly work. Um, so it's a tool that can help us along all those fronts and more. Okay, and uh, this tool can should it be shaped or defined from an ethical perspective? Uh, are there parameters? Are there uh, uh, advice you give to organizations that they start embracing this specific tool? Yeah, look, I mean, it's going to depend on what they're doing. Um, so let's say that they're doing contract contract tracing, right? Um, and you want to sort of use AI to to you know vet through the patterns of people who have it and try to try to identify its source or where it's going to go. Um, one of the big issues there is privacy, obviously, right? Because you're collecting the, you're collecting a tremendous amount of data about lots of people, um, not only whether or not they have it, but also where they're going, what time they're going there, how long they stay there, um, who they're going there with, so on and so forth. So if you want to get anything like wide scale or at least sufficient adoption of a, say a contact tracing app that uses AI, you're going to have to make sure that the privacy controls are very strong and that there's a lot of transparency about what those privacy controls are and why they are what they are. Um, you know, when it comes to things like, I don't know, say diagnosing who has it, you'll have to think carefully about um, uh, things like explainability, whether, whether explainable outputs are important in that context or if we only care about accuracy. Um, sometimes or often, there's a trade-off between the accuracy of, a, of an ML output and the, the explainability of that output, you know, the extent to which we can articulate, as a, you know, metaphorically speaking, the, the reasoning by which the machine outputted the uh, output that it did. Um, sometimes explainability is very important uh, and, it pulls, and it pulls against accuracy and sometimes it's not so important. So you'll have to think about why is explainability important? Is it explainable in this context? And if so, why? And how important is it relative to, relative to accuracy? So there's a whole bunch of sort of, you know, different kinds of ethical questions and pitfalls that um, any company needs to think through when they're, using the, when they're using this technology. Very interesting. Thank you. Now, uh, talking about use case we developed, we, I am the cognitive officer of the Cathedral of Florence. Yeah. And uh, with the 700 years of history, we, we decided as a team to uh, resurrect basically uh, the voice of Michelangelo. Uh, we built an artificial intelligence that allow people to talk to Michelangelo and uh, the AI itself uh, through machine learning communicate back to the experts in Florence who shape their answers. So also from your perspective uh, as a 
a, a former professor of philosophy. What do you think is the contribution of artificial intelligence? Uh, is it good, is it bad, or is it something we have to explore about uh, using this technology to give voice again to someone who's not around and eventually uh, how we avoid the interpretation of his opinions to be uh, hijacked? Yeah, so um, look, it could, be, it could be really great, right? So let's talk about the context that you're talking about using it to sort of um, quote unquote, re recreate Michelangelo. It could be great insofar as it gets more people engaged with the works of Michelangelo and Michelangelo as a person, um, maybe that era of time, uh, maybe it gets them interested in art history more generally. It's a way of engaging with the history and the art that's new and some will find more engaging than say reading a book or watching a lecture on YouTube or something along those lines. So, you know, that's great. Um, there's, a, there's obviously questions with any sort of chat bot about, again, um, privacy. So is there clarity around what data is being collected from that chat and who's asking it? So maybe I'm asking questions that I don't want people to know that I'm asking. Yeah, I'm not totally sure what those might be, but who knows, right? Um, people type all sorts of weird things into chat bot uh, you know, interfaces. So um, maybe they, they incidentally reveal uh, information that they don't want anybody else to know. Like, um, I'm gay, Michelangelo, was Michelangelo gay too? Or something along those lines, right? And they don't want other people knowing that. Uh, so there's a question about what data are, you know, are you collecting and what are you doing with that data? And is there transparency about that with the user? Um, there's questions about potential bias. So um, suppose that you think that, um, you know, I'm trying to think how bias might, I mean, it depends on how you train the chatbot, right? So there's an infamous case of Microsoft training Teo, their chatbot, by um, feeding it with the data garnered from Twitter, mm -hmm. uh, which led to being a racist anti-Semitic chatbot in less than 24 hours. I don't think that's how you're training Michelangelo, so that doesn't seem to be a particular concern. Um, but you might think about the people behind, people who are giving the answers, right? So suppose that the people who, those, the experts that you referenced, um, they are, say, of strong Catholic faith, and they have, a, they have a very strong interest in sort of promulgating Catholicism or something along those lines. And they see this as a way of sort of pushing a Catholic agenda by sort of revealing certain information about Michelangelo that would put it, you know, favor, uh, towards a, that would cast a favorable light on Catholicism or uh, hiding some information about him, again, to cast a favorable light on Catholicism, or at least to refrain from, from casting a negative light on Catholicism. So, you know, you want some level of clarity about who is, who's um, providing those answers, what kind of, um, or their, what the source of their expertise is. You might want to know about the vetting process behind that information. Um, right, so think about if you're going to pick up a book about Michelangelo, there's going to be something like about the author. Yeah. Um, and you might also Google the author's name and find out, oh, this person is a, you know, devout Catholic. That might be relevant to you. But if it's just an AI, you know, a conversational interface, um, and it's just sort of completely obscure who's behind it, then, you know, there's a worry that of the lack of transparency will cause lack of distrust. Um, and of course, for the people developing the chatbot, um, there's hopefully interested in making it as objective as possible in this domain. And so you'd want to vet your sources properly. Perfect. Thank you very much, Reed. And that's very good insight indeed. Uh, very good insight for us uh, going forward. Now, uh, if people want to learn more about your business and your work, what's the best way to reach out to you and learn more about your work? Um, so there's a number of ways. You can find me on LinkedIn. I post quite a bit on LinkedIn on, uh, you know, ethics and data, ethics and AI. Um, you can always reach out to me at read at virtualconsultants.com. You can go to my website, virtualconsultants.com. You can go to readblackman.com. Uh, you can read, uh, I have a recent article in Harvard Business Review on a practical guide to building ethical AI. You could check that out. Um, anyway, Google my name. I promise you, you'll find me. I'm around. Thank you very much, Reed. Really appreciate yeah, it. My pleasure. Thank you.